we are sounding an alarm. The global fallout from COVID, the COVID crisis, the war in Ukraine, the social and economic impacts of that war are blowing our AIDS response off course. Progress in tackling new infections has slowed. Progress in getting people on treatment has slowed. Progress in stopping AIDS-related deaths has slowed. And meanwhile, resources for the response, both domestic and donor resources, are shrinking. In Africa, the biggest challenge is that adolescent girls and young women are the most vulnerable and getting new infections. 52% of the new infections last year in Sub-Saharan Africa were among adolescent girls and young women, although they are only 24% of the population. There is an issue here of tackling social norms, of tackling gender inequalities. Half the children in this world who are HIV positive are not on treatment, yet for adults, 75% are on treatment. We are failing our own children. What is fueling this uh, infection rate among young women? Sexual violence, gender inequalities in opportunity, the fact that millions of our girls are not in school itself puts them in places of vulnerability. We know, for example, that if you keep a girl in school up to the end of secondary school, her risk to HIV infection can be reduced by up to 50%. UNAIDS 2025 AIDS target aims to put people living with HIV and communities at risk at the center. What are the main pillars of this strategy and how do you assess progress made for this program? While we've been making a lot of progress on getting people on treatment, new infections we haven't done as well. Putting more emphasis on prevention is core to the new strategy. We have hopeful new technologies like long-acting PrEP. Long-acting injectable treatment is also in the pipeline, could hit the market soon, but these must be accessible price-wise. We are pushing hard with companies, asking them to make these new technologies available for those who need them at the right price. The people who need services are best served and closest to their communities. When communities are empowered to deliver, we see that people are reached. For example, 80% of prevention services will be led by communities themselves. What are your thoughts on complacency as one of the reasons for this reverse in progress that we are seeing? Last year, 650,000 people died of AIDS-related illnesses. 1.5 million people were newly infected. So AIDS is not over. We have a funding gap of $8 billion globally. But once the resourcing is there, we need the wealthy countries to share their technologies so people can get the best that science has to offer at the right price. We need to remove those laws that criminalize people and stop them from being able to come forward to get services. We need to fight stigma and discrimination and put services in the hands of communities to deliver. That way, we can turn it around. To what extent should we be optimistic about a, a possible cure for HIV in the near future? That is not um, a, a prospect that we see close. A, a cure, but indeed we call for more resources to be invested in continuing to search for a vaccine and searching for a cure. We call for more resources to be invested in HIV science. And we also know that the tools that keep increasing that are available for prevention, for testing, like self-testing and for treatment can give everybody a chance to live a good life and to prevent new infections if also the, everybody can be reached and the inequalities that stop people from reaching services are removed.